Come with me as we enter a world full of colors and flutters right here at the Arboretum, where pollinators search for the tastiest flower and where flowers wait for their perfect pollinator. Our third fable is called The Perfect Fit. Our story begins with blooms of yellows, oranges, and reds, with pops of pinks and purples strewn across the landscape at the North Carolina Arboretum. The flowers stand tall to the sky as if they are greeting the sun, and their stems gently sway with the breeze as if they are welcoming the butterflies and the bees. Along the path, walks one of the garden's frequent visitors, a lovely lady by the name of Ms. Flora. Oh! <laughs> Each day, she strolls through the gardens with her sketchbook, admiring the beautiful flowers being tickled by the tiny tongues of pollinators. These are interesting. I wonder if any pollinators like these. I'm sure insects do. That's just too tempting. On this particularly beautiful day, Ms. Flora wanders to the stream garden and comes across a fluttery butterfly on a brightly colored flower. She pulls out her sketchbook and observes the quick yet gentle movement as this eastern tiger swallowtail pollinates. Next, Ms. Flora passes through the Blue Ridge Court, passing the sculpture of Frederick Law Olmsted, the father of American landscape architecture. She winds her way around at the spiral flower bed sculpture, finding sweet honeybees zipping around a cluster of delicate purple petals. She takes her time to sketch these beauties too. This is a very popular plant. As Ms. Flora continues her garden stroll, she notices a particularly beautiful flower, a flower as if created to be noticed. She gently pulls out her sketchbook, ready to recreate this passion flower's intricate beauty. She notices the large petals and alternating sepals that frame the other striking structures of the flower. Atop the petals rest the thin corona filaments, each one containing varying hues of purple. Around the base of the central stalk is the operculum, a circle of fibers that protect the flower from nectar robbers. It makes it quite hard for any animal to reach that nectar, but once inside this barrier, a pollinator has full access to the precious nectar within. Oh, that's beautiful. On the central stalk, there are five pollen-producing anthers. Above these are three long stigmas, the female part of the plant that receives the pollen. This design is not by accident. In fact, by having the stigmas above the anthers, there's less chance that the pollen will travel up for self-pollination to occur. With pollinator assistance, the pollen will be received by the stigma to be deposited to the ovary within so a fruit can be produced. As Miss Flora observes and sketches this passion flower, she notices things seem quieter here than other parts of the garden. And despite the passion flower's showy beauty, she can't seem to find a single pollinator nearby. Miss Flora looks left, then right, waiting for one of the flitter flyers to pass by. But her glances of hopefulness do not seem to coax the pollinators over to her. Feeling compelled to find a passion flower pollinator, Ms. Flora says, hmm. 
will help you find a pollinator, sweet flower. The flower and Miss Flora wait in the sunshine for a pollinator. A few minutes later, a big green grasshopper springs in front of the flower. Miss Flora perks up, hoping this friend might aid in pollen movement. Can you pollinate this flower? She asks kindly. The grasshopper turns around to look at the big, beautiful purple flower, and then turns back to Miss Flora. I have no idea what you mean. Sorry. And she hops away. Miss Flora knew this was a futile wish, as grasshoppers aren't actually pollinators. Miss Flora suddenly thinks to ask a different pollination force, one that can't be seen but can be heard. She calls upon the wind, knowing that this breezy friend helps pollinate other plants like wheat and corn. But as the wind gently moves the petals of the flower, the pollen is too heavy and sticky to be carried to another flower. Ms. Flora sighs, knowing the wind is not a good pairing for the passion flower either. Ms. Flora starts to think that perhaps today, her favorite flower won't be pollinated. As she begins to pack up her sketchbook, she notices a tired carpenter bee, covered with pollen from a busy day's work, buzz, buzz, buzz over to the passion flower. Even though the nectar is hidden, this bee knows just how to reach it, and the flower, in return, knows that its pollinator is near. In fact, since Miss Flora has been sitting there, the female part of the plant, the stigma, has turned downwards past the male part, the anthers. This is a sign that the flower is now poised and ready to receive pollen. As the little bee nudges her way past the fibers of the operculum to the nectar, the golden dust covering her hairs rubs off onto the stigma directly above her. Unaware of the important role she is filling for this little flower, the busy little bee continues to drink from the sweet source of nectar that she has tapped into. After a few sips, the carpenter bee livens up. Ah, just what I needed! And starts to buzz to other passion flowers, along the way transferring more pollen to others that are ready to receive it along her flower hopping journey. Ms. Flora had seen carpenter bees on other flowers and had seen bumblebees and butterflies on passion flowers, but today she truly admired the efficiency and ease of this carpenter bee, this passion flower. Like the perfect fit of a delicate glass slipper. She's amazed at how this pairing occurred all on its own. Perhaps her worries are unwarranted in this garden. As it turns out, there's a pollinator for every flower and a flower for every pollinator. Happy that the passion flower is now at pollination peace, she closes her sketchbook and continues her garden walk, excited to return to her flower friends and pollinator pals. A couple months later, Ms. Flora returns to the exact spot in the garden where she watched the sweet flower being pollinated this time, she notices it looks different. Instead of a passion flower, it has now become a passion fruit, thanks to the wonderful carpenter bee. And that's the end of our third story. Stay tuned next week for our last chapter of our storybook series as we learn about another native pollinator. Good luck, have fun, keep exploring.